Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to book two of The Law of One, The Raw Material. And we are continuing on to session 27. And in this book or this part of The Raw Material, we really do get in to what is the law of one, which is basically understanding how the entire universe, how everything everywhere was created and how it began and how we're all connected. And so I'm tempted to always really dive into the meaning and my take on everything and downloads that I've received uh, for this material, but I am hesitant because there is something to be said about understanding something on your own and discovery on your own in order to have the understanding. But the one thing that I do want to state before we get into this next session is when Ra talks about polarity, you know, like the law of one, the, the meaning of the universe, the meaning of everything is all about expansion, about knowing oneself. And if we're all connected, we all want to expand. Like we're not, nothing can just sit still as a statue. Uh, so we want to expand. And in order to do that, we need polarity. Uh, the same way we don't know what one thing is without experiencing the opposite. You know, you don't know what light is until you've experienced darkness. You don't know what, you know, triumph is until you've experienced defeat. You don't know what one thing is until you experience the polarity of it. And that's how you know what something is. You know, you can't just have everything good, 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 good uh, in your life even because how would you know it was good? Because you need to experience something bad to be able to understand and know it. So that is what they are um, beginning with in these next sessions. And really the polarity I don't, I think is really important because understanding polarity and understanding um, the expansion of what the universe is about, what the law of one is about is kind of the point to everything. And later on in um, the later books and later sessions, it'll become more clear to you of what Ra is trying to convey about how we're all tied in together and how expansion exists. Things will become more clear about what the Logoses are, how they began and what happened before then. You know, in the later sessions, they really will talk about what happened, you know, as we understand the universe, like the Big Bang, what was going on before the Big Bang? What happened before that? And that will become more clear. So let's get into it with book two, uh, session 27 with the raw material. The Law of One, book two, session 27, February 21st, 1981. Ra, I am Ra. I greet you in the loving the light of the one infinite creator. I communicate now. Questioner, this session I thought we would start book two of the law of one, which will focus on what we consider to be the only important aspect of our being. This, I assume, will be a much more difficult task than the first book. We want to focus on things that are not transient, and as questioner I may have difficulty at times. When I do have this difficulty I may fall back on some transient question simply because I will not be able to formulate what I really need, and I apologize for this. I will try my best to stay on the track and eliminate things of no value from the book if they do occur during my questioning. The statement I will make to begin with is, in this density we tend to focus our minds on some transient condition or activity with little regard to its value or use as a aid or a tool for growth and understanding of the true and undistorted essence of the creation of which we are in. Integral part. I will attempt, by starting at the beginning of creation, to establish an overview of ourselves in the creation, thereby arriving at a more informed viewpoint of what we consider to be reality. It is hoped that this will allow us to participate more effectively in the process of evolution. I would like to start with definitions of words that we have been using that possibly we have not, and possibly cannot, understand totally, but since the first words that we use are intelligent infinity. I would like for you to define each of these words and give the definition of their combination. Ra, I am Ra. 
Your vibrations of mind complex indicate a query. However, your vibrational sound complex indicate a preference. Please restate. Questioner, would you define the word intelligent in the context of intelligent infinity? Ra, I am Ra. We shall address the entire spectrum of this question before defining as requested. Your language, using vibrational sound complexes, can be at best an approximation of that which is closer to an understanding, if you will, of the nature of conscious thought. Perceptions are not the same as sound vibration complexes and the attempt to define will therefore be a frustrating one for you, although we are happy to aid you within the limits of your sound vibration complexes. To define intelligent apart from infinity is difficult, for these two vibration complexes equal one concept. It is much like attempting to divide your sound vibration concept, faith, into two parts. We shall attempt to aid you however. Questioner, it is not necessary to divide it. The definition of intelligent infinity is sufficient. Could you define that please? Ra, I am Ra. This is exponentially simpler and less confusing. There is unity. This unity is all that there is. This unity has a potential in kinetic. The potential is intelligent infinity. Tapping this potential will yield work. This work has been called by us, intelligent energy. The nature of this work is dependent upon the particular distortion of free will which in turn is the nature of a particular intelligent energy of kinetic focus of the potential of unity or that which is all. Questioner, I would like to expand a little on the concept of work. In Newtonian physics the concept of work is the product of force and distance. I am assuming that the work of which you speak is a much broader term including possibly work and consciousness. Am I correct? Ra, I am Ra. As we use this term it is universal in application. Intelligent infinity has a rhythm or flow as of a giant heart beginning with the central sun as you would think or conceive of this, the presence of the flow inevitable as a tide of beingness without polarity, without finity. The vest and silent all beating outward, outward, focusing outward and inward until the focuses are complete. The intelligence or consciousness of foci have reached a state where their, shall we say, spiritual nature or mass calls them inward, inward, inward until all is coalesced. This is the rhythm of reality as you spoke. Questioner, then I think I have extracted an important point from this in that in intelligent infinity we have work without polarity, or a potential difference does not have to exist. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. There is no difference, potential or kinetic, in unity. The basic rhythms of intelligent infinity are totally without distortion of any kind. The rhythms are clothed in mystery, for they are being itself. From this undistorted unity, however, appears a potential in relation to intelligent energy. In this way you may observe the term to be somewhat two-sided, one use of the term, that being is the undistorted unity, being without any kinetic or potential side. The other application of this term, which we use, undifferentiatedly for lack of other terms in the sense of the vast potential tapped into by foci or focuses of energy, we call intelligent energy. Questioner. I understand that the first distortion of intelligent infinity is the distortion of what we call free will. Can you give me a definition of this distortion? Ra, I am Ra. In this distortion of the law of one it is recognized that the creator will know itself. Questioner, then am I correct in assuming that the creator then grants for this knowing the concept of total freedom of choice in the ways of knowing? Am I correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is quite correct. Questioner, this then being the first distortion of the law of one, which I am assuming is the law of intelligent infinity, all other distortions which are the total experience of the creation spring from this. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is both correct and incorrect. In your illusion all experience springs from the law of free will or the way of confusion. In another sense, which we are learning, the experiences are this distortion. Questioner, I will have to think about that and ask questions on it in the next session. So I will go on now to what you have given me as the second distortion which is the distortion of love. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, I would like for you to define love in its sense as the second distortion. Ra, I am Ra. This must be defined against the background of intelligent infinity or unity or the one creator with the primal distortion of free will. The term love then may be seen as the focus, the choice of attack, the type of energy of an extremely, shall we say, High order which causes intelligent energy to be formed from the potential of intelligent infinity in just such and such a way. This then may be seen to be an object rather than an activity by some of your peoples, and the principle of this extremely strong energy focus being worshipped as the creator instead of unity or oneness from which all loves emanate. Questioner, 
Is there a manifestation of love that we could call vibration? Ra, I am Ra. Again we reach semantic difficulties. The vibration or density of love or understanding is not a term used in the same sense as the second distortion, love, the distortion love being the great activator and primal, co-creator of various creations using intelligent infinity, the vibration love being that density in which those who have learned to do an activity called loving without significant distortion, then seek the ways of light or wisdom. Thus in vibratory sense love comes into light in the sense of the activity of unity in its free will. Love uses light and has the power to direct light in its distortions. Thus vibratory complexes recapitulate and reverse the creation in its unity, thus showing the rhythm or flow of the great heartbeat, if you will use this analogy. Questioner, I will make a statement that I have extracted from the physics of Dewey Larson which may or may not be close to what we are trying to explain. Larson says that all is motion which we can take is vibration, and that vibration is pure vibration and is not physical in any way or in any form or density and the first product of that vibration is what we call the photon or particle of light. I am trying to make an analogy between this physical solution and the concept of love and light. Is this close to the concept of love creating light? Ra, I am Ra. You are correct. Questioner, then I will expand a bit more on this concept. We have the infinite vibration of love which can occur, I am assuming, at varying frequencies. I would assume that it begins at one basic frequency. Does this have any meaning? Ra. I am Ra. Each love, as you term the prime movers, comes from one frequency, if you wish to use this term. This frequency is unity. We would perhaps liken it rather to a strength than a frequency, this strength being infinite, the finite qualities being chosen by the particular nature of this primal movement. Questioner, then this vibration which is, for lack of better understanding, pure motion, it is pure love, it is nothing that is yet condensed, shall we say to form any type of density of illusion. This love then creates by this process of vibration a photon, as we call it, which is the basic particle of light. This photon then, by added vibrations and rotation, further condenses into particles of the densities we experience. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, then this light which forms the densities has what we call color. This color is divided into seven categories. Can you tell me if there is a reason or explanation for these categories of color? Ra, I am Ra. This will be the last complete question of this session as this instrument is low on vital energy. We will answer briefly and then you may question further in subsequent sessions. The nature of the vibratory patterns of your universe is dependent upon the configurations placed upon the original material or light by the focus or love using its intelligent energy to create a certain pattern of illusions or densities in order to satisfy its own intelligent estimate of a method of knowing itself. Thus the colors, as you call them, are as straight, or narrow, or necessary as is possible to express, given the will of love. There is further information which we shall be happy to share by answering your questions. However, we do not wish to deplete this instrument. Is there a short query necessary before we leave? Questioner, the only thing I need to know is if there is anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or to help her or this contact? Ra, I am Ra. This instrument is slightly uncomfortable. Perhaps a simpler configuration of the body would be appropriate given the instrument's improving physical complex condition. I am Ra. You are conscientious in your endeavors. We shall be with you. We leave you now in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. Rejoice, therefore, in the power and the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai. The Law of One, Book 2, Session 28. February 22, 1981. Ra, I am Ra. I greet you in the love and the light of the infinite creator. I communicate now. Questioner, I may be backtracking a little today because I think that possibly we are at the most important part of what we are doing in trying to make it apparent how everything is one, how it comes from one intelligent infinity. This is difficult, so please bear with my errors in questioning. The concept that I have right now of the process, using both what you have told me and some of Dewey Larson's material having to do with the physics of the process, is that intelligent infinity expands outward from all locations everywhere. It expands outward uniformly like the surface of a bubble or a balloon expanding outward from every point everywhere. It expands outward at what is called unit velocity or the velocity of light. This is Larson's idea of the progression of what he calls space-time. Is this concept correct? Ra. I am Ra. This concept is incorrect as is any concept of the one intelligent infinity. 
This concept is correct in the context of one particular logos, or love, or focus of this creator which has chosen its, shall we say, natural laws and ways of expressing them mathematically and otherwise. The one undifferentiated intelligent infinity, unpolarized, full and whole, is the macrocosm of the mystery clad being. We are messengers of the law of one. Unity, at this approximation of understanding, cannot be specified by any physics but only become activated or potentiated intelligent infinity due to the catalyst of free will. This may be difficult to accept. However, the understandings we have to share begin and end in mystery. Questioner, yesterday we had arrived at a point where we were considering colors of light. You said, the nature of the vibratory patterns of your universe is dependent upon the configurations placed upon the original material or light by the focus or love using its intelligent energy to create a certain pattern of illusions or densities in order to satisfy its own intelligent estimate of a method of knowing itself. Then after this you said that there was more material that you would be happy to share, but we ran out of time. Could you give us further information on that? Ra, I am Ra. In discussing this information we then, shall we say, Snap back into the particular methods of understanding or seeing that which the one, sound vibration complex, Dewey, offers, this being correct for the second, meaning of intelligent infinity, the potential which then through catalyst forms the kinetic. This information is a natural progression of inspection of the kinetic shape of your environment. You may understand each color or ray as being, as we had said, a very specific and accurate portion of intelligent energy's representation of intelligent infinity, each ray having been previously inspected in other regards. This information may be of aid here. We speak now non-specifically to increase the depth of your conceptualization of the nature of what is. The universe in which you live is recapitulation in each part of intelligent infinity. Thus you will see the same patterns repeated in physical and metaphysical areas, the rays or portions of light being, as you surmise those areas of what you may call the physical illusion which rotate, vibrate, or are of a nature that may be, shall we say, counted or categorized in rotation manner in space-time as described by the one known as Dewey, some substances having various of the rays in a physical manifestation visible to the eye. This being apparent in the nature of your crystallized minerals which you count as precious, the ruby being red and so forth. Questioner, this light occurred as a consequence of vibration which is a consequence of love. I am going to ask if that statement is correct. Ra, I am Ra. This statement is correct. Questioner, this light then can condense into material as we know it into our density, into all of our chemical elements because of rotations of the vibration at quantized units or intervals of angular velocity. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is quite correct. Questioner, thank you. I am wondering, what is the catalyst or the activator of the rotation? What causes the rotation so that light condenses into our physical or chemical elements? Ra, I am Ra. It is necessary to consider the enabling function of the focus known as love. This energy is of an ordering nature. It orders in a cumulative way from greater to lesser so that when its universe, as you may call it, is complete, the manner of development of each detail is inherent in the living light and thus will develop in such and such a way. Your own universe having been well studied in an empirical fashion by those you call your scientists and having been understood or visualized, shall we say, with greater accuracy by the understandings or visualizations of the one known as Dewey. Questioner, when does the individualization or the individualized portion of consciousness come into play? At what point does individualized consciousness take over working on the basic light? Ra, I am Ra. You remain carefully in the area of creation itself. In this process we must further confuse you by stating that the process by which free will acts upon potential intelligent infinity to become focused intelligent energy takes place without the space-time of which you are so aware as it is your continuum experience. The experience or existence of space-time comes into being after the individuation process of logos or love has been completed in the physical universe, as you would call it has coalesced or begun to draw inward while moving outward to the extent that that which you call your sun bodies have in their turn created timeless chaos coalescing into what you call planets. These vortices of intelligent energy spending a large amount of what you would call first density in a timeless state, the space-time realization being one of the learned teachings of this density of beingness. Thus we have difficulty answering your questions with regard to time and space and their relationship to the, what you would call, Original creation which is not a part of space-time as you can understand it. Questioner, thank you. Does a unit of consciousness, an individualized unit of consciousness, create a unit of the creation? 
I will give an example. One individualized consciousness creates one galaxy of stars, the type that has many millions of stars in it. Does this happen? Ra, I am Ra. This can happen. The possibilities are infinite. Thus the Logos may create what you call a star system or it may be the Logos creating billions of star systems. This is the cause of the confusion in the term galaxy, for there are many different Logos entities or creations and we would call each, using your sound vibration complexes, a galaxy. Questioner, let's take as an example the planet that we are on now and tell me how much of the creation was created by the same Logos that created this planet? Ra, I am Ra. This planetary Logos is a strong Logos creating approximately 250 billion of your star systems for its creation. The, shall we say, laws or physical ways of this creation will remain, therefore, constant. Questioner, then what you are saying is that the lenticular star system which we call a galaxy that we find ourselves in with approximately 250 billion other suns like our own was created by a single Logos. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, since there are many individualized portions of consciousness in this lenticular galaxy, did this Logos then subdivide into more individualization of consciousness to create these consciousnesses? Ra, I am Ra. You are perceptive. This is also correct although an apparent paradox. Questioner, could you tell me what you mean by an apparent paradox? Ra, I am Ra. It would seem that if one Logos creates the intelligent energy ways for a large system there would not be the necessity or possibility of the further sub-Logos differentiation. However, within limits, this is precisely the case, and it is perceptive that this has been seen. Questioner, thank you. I'll call the lenticular galaxy that we are in the major galaxy just so we will not get mixed up in our terms. Does all the consciousness and individualized form that goes into what we are calling the major galaxy start out and go through all of the densities in order? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and into the 8th. Or are there some who start up higher in the rank so that there is always a mixture of intelligent consciousness in the galaxy? Ra, I am Ra. The latter is more nearly correct. In each beginning there is the beginning from infinite strength. Free will acts as a catalyst. Things begin to form the universes. Consciousness then begins to have the potential to experience. The potentials of experience are created as a part of intelligent energy and are fixed before experience begins. However, there is always, due to free will acting infinitely upon the creation, a great variation in initial responses to intelligent energy's potential. Thus almost immediately the foundations of the, shall we call it, hierarchical nature of beings begins to manifest to some portions of consciousness or awareness learned through experience in a much more efficient manner. Questioner, is there any reason for some portions being much more efficient in learning? Ra, I am Ra. Is there any reason for some to learn more quickly than others? Look, if you wish, to the function of the will the, shall we say, attraction to the upward spiraling line of light. Questioner, I am assuming that there are eight densities created when this major galaxy was created. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is basically correct. However, it is well to perceive that the eighth density functions also as the beginning density or first density, in its latter stages, of the next octave of densities. Questioner. Are you saying then that there are an infinite number of octaves of densities 1 through 8? Ra, I am Ra. We wish to establish that we are truly humble messengers of the law of one. We can speak to you of our experiences and our understandings and teach learn in limited ways. However, we cannot speak in firm knowledge of all the creations. We know only that they are infinite. We assume an infinite number of octaves. However, it has been impressed upon us by our own teachers that there is a mystery-clad unity of creation in which all consciousness periodically coalesces and again begins. Thus we can only say we assume an infinite progression though we understand it to be cyclical in nature and, as we have said, clad in mystery. Questioner, thank you. When this major galaxy is formed by the Logos, polarity then exists in a sense that we have electrical polarity. We do have electrical polarity existing at that time. Is that correct? Ra, I am Ra. I accept this as correct with a stipulation that what you term electrical be understood as not only the one, Larson, stipulated its meaning but also in what you would call the metaphysical sense. Questioner, are you saying then that we have not only a polarity of electrical charge but also a polarity in consciousness at that time? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. All is potentially available from the beginning of your physical space-time, 
it then being the function of consciousness complexes to begin to use the physical materials to gain experience to then polarize in a metaphysical sense. The potentials for this are not created by the experiencer but by intelligent energy. This will be the last full question of this session due to our desire to foster this instrument as it slowly regains physical complex energy. May we ask if you have one or two questions we may answer shortly before we close? Questioner, I am assuming that the process of creation, after the original creation of the major galaxy, is continued by the further individualization of the consciousness of the logos so that there are many, many portions of the individualized consciousness creating further items for experience all over the galaxy. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct, for within the, shall we say, guidelines or ways of the logos, the sublogos may find various means of differentiating experiences without removing or adding to these ways. Questioner, thank you. And since we are out of time I will ask if there is anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or to help the contact? Ra, I am Ra. This instrument is well adjusted. You are conscientious. I am Ra. I leave you, my friends, in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth then rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one creator. Adonai. Okay, so that was the end of part one of book two for the raw material. And Ra really does dive deep in the really complexity of our universe and how it was created and its purpose. And he really does try to explain, uh, it's the concept of love and light, which is basically a vibration of everything. And all of you have heard before that we're just like stardust, you know, we're all made up of the same materials. We're just organized differently, but basically all the elements are, are the same everywhere, whether you're a burning star or a cold rock in the universe, or a living being. We still have all the kind of the same stardust stuff that will organize and vibrate at a different level in order for creation. And when consciousness gets put into those vibrations of basically just stardust, that's what is creating our reality. Now, the colors are important and Ra talks about them over and over again as a way in this 3D universe that we're in, you know, basically our basic, uh, you know, primary colors of the chakra system is the level of the vibration. So when love and consciousness vibrate, it creates. And another way to think of it is that your thoughts can create reality. And that is something that is um, something kind of difficult to wrap your head around really that you can just think something into existence simply by thinking it. The consciousness of it itself can create. Now because we are in a veil of forgetfulness and have free will and there are rules to what we've agreed to when we we came into this you know 3d reality um, part of the expansion is to remember under the veil of forgetfulness that we are creators that we can create through thought and consciousness and this is something that they were just barely touching on in this uh, last session and Ra does talk a little bit further on later on in the sessions about what a Logos is. Uh, they haven't really touched on it yet. And again, I'm tempted to talk more about it, but it is something I want you to discover as we go through this material. But I will say that as even Ra talks about this material, he is a, a sixth density being, right? He's, a, he's from the sixth density consciousness from the law of one. Now, he even talks that there is eight levels or eight densities that we move through. And I believe, I think it was 30 million years it takes of living, of, of experiences and expansion to move through the sixth density. And that's where Ra is coming from. So there are things that even Ra will not be able to fully understand and tell us because there are eighth densities. And at the end of the eighth, that's when you go back into the first, 
through creation of thought. So even Ra admits that um, he'll be limited to answer certain questions only because he himself is sixth density and his teachers have taught him that there are eight that he will need to graduate to. And that is the same path that we are all on. We're in 3D and have just moved into 4D and we are on our way to all the way to eighth and we'll get there, we'll all get there eventually and we're all connected and we all came from the pinpoint of the end of an eighth density before we came into this one. And I thought that was almost humbling for Ra to admit that he doesn't know everything. <laughs> because it really feels like he does uh, when we're uh, absorbing this material. So we'll get in further in the later sessions when we really um, try to understand the concept of the logos because that the part that's the part that really interests me. So um, thank you so much everyone for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed book one and book two is a very heavy heavy material of um, understanding and I hope you guys all enjoy this experience with me and please hit the like, share, and subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications and I will see you in the next video.